Now, I've always had a certain fascination for time travel and time travel type stories, but you really can't find a, a good uh, system within role playing. Now, I'm going to write probably a two page role play simplified time travel system, but you know, I could throw that on the market and it'd be absolutely worthless, and I would agree with that. Now, the problem I have with time travel adventures is either the referee has too much arbitrary control or the outcome is just not fleshed out enough. So what I've done is, besides the fact that I'm going to write a two-page role-play system on time travel, I'm going to put up this uh, Excel program that I've written that will allow you to see the ramifications of time travel. Now, how's that going to work? Well, I've been looking at code like this since the 80s, and I've been slowly building it, and now I finally have put together something that's a little bit more functional. I'll probably call this thing a time twister. What it is, it's a series of periods that are presented to the players, and then those periods within them have what's known as a John Bar hinge. Now, a John Bar hinge is a moment in time where time can change one way or the other. I do not believe in the whole butterfly effect of time, that every insignificant change that you make to an era, the timeline will tend to dampen out one way or another. But there will be certain events that the players can adventure into and try to change. For instance, in this period with the Romans and the Gaul, uh, John Bar hinge A, as you can see up here, uh, would take four steps of action, and you need to seduce and safeguard the era's wild card, Cleopatra, knowing her vanity will cause the Romans to abandon democracy. Likewise, the second John Bar hinge is stabilize the workforce, and the third one is safeguard the Roman leader, Julius Caesar. There's also things like breaking into crypts of famous people so that you can pick up relics of uh, historic and also uh, spiritual value. And then you can also recruit people directly from the timeline to help you in your endeavors. Now, this will be able to be played in two modes. One is just a player fascination mode, and the other will be in a GM mode. And the GM mode will allow uh, the referee to present events in the time travel game. And as the players resolve them, he'll be able to select buttons off the map to see how it changes time. Now, let me demonstrate this. For instance, here, I can go by using the arrow keys up one period, and after the Roman period, there's plenty of things that are happening in history, but the next set of John Bar hinges occur during the Roman Empire in a European empire, and the John Bar hinges there are safeguard a Roman Empire's wild card Horus, or assassinate the Roman general Varus, or uh, safeguard the Roman leader Augustus Caesar. I have already created one button. I've already completed one of these, and I have this button, and by activating it, I will change time. Let me go to the next era really quick and show you that from normal timeline, the Roman Empire will go to the Holy Roman Empire with its own set of John Bars. But if I go back to the previous era where I've opened up a John Bar hinge and I decide instead of doing more actions within the period of enforcement, tinkering, etc., I can activate the John Bar hinge. So say the players have assassinated Roman Emperor General Varus as he enters Germania before the battles of the uh, Teutonberg Wall. Now by hitting that, you'll notice that it's going to redraw the map. And in this case, we still get the Holy Roman Empire, and we still enter the Dark Ages after it. But we now have a different set of John Bar hinges because time has changed. And if we go even further, we start to see in the timeline... Uh, events that are slightly historic but did not exist in the first timeline. For instance, the Arabs become a dominant power. You look down here. Also, you can notice on my thing it's telling me I have a critical error that I never reach uh, period 100 where the time travel anomaly is. I have the uh, Seljuk Turks and the Fatimids. I'm getting more of a Middle Eastern flair to the timeline. And as I continue, you'll start to see the Venetians and the Genoese. I'm going to restore the original timeline. This is an option of just restoring your original baseline. So I'm back to the Egyptians era. And if I go forward, probably three or four eras, I can take myself through the New Kingdom and then to the Babylonians, onward through the Greeks and the Macedonians, if I'm remembering correctly. Finally, you'll get to the early Romans, where I was before, and the Roman Empire, where you still have those events of assassinating Varus, because I reset just a baseline. But when I go to the next era, into the Holy Roman Empire, you'll notice that you have this, but it's no longer assassinate Charlemagne, it's assassinate Augustine. 
if we go to the era after that, which you might have remembered was an Arab uh, influenced era, no, we've gone on to the Normans and the Saxons, uh, where um, William is trying to conquer England. The John Bar hinges again will change as the players take action. Now, let me show you this in GM mode. Now, GM mode is my way of letting the players uh, see a little bit more of what's happening as the timeline alters. Again, a baseline of GM mode will we'll load the same baseline as you would get with restore the timeline here. There's Egyptians and Nubians, and I can go forward and I can get to the New Kingdom. But you'll notice all of these different options. Now, there are John Bar hinges that are presented to the referee. For instance, I could uh, have the players assassinate a New Kingdom leader, Ramses, who opposes enshrining monotheism and, and establishing a unified dogma. And after the players do that, I can decide, well, did that cause a calamity in the timeline? Does that cause imperial reactions in the timeline? I can pick all these. If you actually play the game, you'll see that your choices are limited. But if you're in referee mode, let's say that's going to cause some sort of external problem if I assassinate Ramses. Probably somebody else will want to take over his empire. So what happens when I click the button for external influences on my timeline here? Now you'll notice in the original timeline, we would go from the New Kingdom to the Babylonians. But now in the modified timeline, I go from, going back one era, in the New Kingdom... You see it's right there again because you're not changing the past by changing time. You're changing the future. And I go to the next era. The next era presented has totally skipped over the Babylonians. The John Bar hinges no longer affect the Babylonians. You jump right to the Macedonians, which would skip the Macedonians. The whole Greek era has disappeared. And so now the Macedonians have dominated. Yet again, the three John Bar hinges have changed because we've changed time. I'm in referee mode here. So let's say that the Macedonians and uh, Alexander created a stagnated era. Let me click the button for that. Where is that going to take us? And that takes us over into the rise of the Indian people in the Gupta. And then if I go after that step, what magical mischief appears? Well, I go into the Ptolemaic period. And then we go into the Mali Empire appears suddenly to be dominant in my new modified timeline. I'm over here. Wow, I just hit a shattered point in the timeline. And everything will sort of reset on this. Now, when you're in referee mode, you can go back from this. So something would happen in the era of the Mali Empire and the Bantu. And there's other uh, hinted at cultures that are developing here. You can sort of see a, a proto-European, uh, probably Holy Roman Empire type of, uh, but it's already in the New World. And the Malis have already gotten the New World in this modified period. And it says, uh, this area has historic inconsistencies when paired to our reference artifact. The game is prefaced on the fact that you have a, a paper encyclopedia of history. And you're not necessarily trying to keep history in that mode, but that paper encyclopedia compared would be your restore timeline reference. And in this case, the Mali Empire, after that, we have no more time. It's been destroyed. And you can start to see that Neanderthals, the Aryans, are trying to kill off the Neanderthals. Capture and castrate that Aryan's leader, Goebbels, as a reminder that he's not the big dog on Eternity Road. There is a little spiritual element in most of the games I write, and that's probably my Catholic influence. But it's also the fact that you want the game not to be a rote exercise. You want the players to be sort of enamored by everything. In GM mode, you can see automatically, depending upon the era, the major contact that can be recruited in the different eras in the Mali Empire, the different uh, artifacts and relics that can be created by that. Indra's Lotus here. Where if I just restore the, the timeline to a historic period, I'm actually playing the game. And when I play the game, let me go forward a little bit. This is just a historic timeline. Recognizable by anyone who's had a ninth grade discussion of history. In this case, I'm all the way up to the Macedonians. I go through and there's my Romans again. And some of the things you can do in play, for instance, is I can tinker. If I tinker with this, I am uh, kidnapping a, watch, a witch doctor or shaman, scholar, or tribal headman, and 
for enhanced interrogation. Let me click that for you. I probably failed miserably. You can see the dice rolls over here. That four means I blipped in time back to the Egyptian era. Let's see what happened to my op here. I, this op requires all, uh, all to have acute hearing, and I don't have any agents with me, so that's not going to affect me too much. Your actions generated two dice. You can see them rolled over here. At a bonus of plus one to each die, that effort dropped the task zero step, <laughs> and I gained no experience from that. So my uh, timeline that I tried to change in the Roman era was uh, so ineffectively changed that the timeline itself, the great Metatron, has decided to send me back to a different point. Now, Metatron uh, could either be some sort of spiritual element that appears in the game, or it's just some sort of master AI that controls the time travel anomaly. I'm going to uh, resist clicking buttons to change time, and I'm going to just go through time here at a, a, an expedient rate with about 15 different eras or more that the baseline timeline has with John Bar hinges. You're, and if you're not familiar with the term John Bar hinges, you can do a wiki on it. Uh, the John Bar hinge was a, uh, a coined a phrase in one of the first time travel uh, novels that was ever written. As I go through history here, cascading forward, if this seems like a, uh, an awful mess to you, well, I guess you probably don't have the intellect to handle time travel. No, that's a sad dig. It just means that uh, you would have to download this and see what it is. And this will be up online for download probably in next month or so, about the time that I come out with my uh, two-page uh, role playing. Just trying to point out some of the other features here. Again, with a 12-minute video, I can uh, you can skip forward, or I will edit some things out. Oh, look, I've got the Tudors and the Irish at war here, and I go into the Conquistadors conquering the Incan, my favorite subject with Crimson Cutlass. You can get over to the American colonies fighting the Mohawk, but also fighting the Wars of Independence. From there, we skip forward to the United States and Civil War. And if you don't like uh, everything being so uh, Western European heavy in its historical flow, well, get in there and change things. You're going to find there's all sorts of period that will appear for you as you change time. Nationalist wars, I guess we're up to World War I here. After that, we can go into, oh, looks like we got Nazi Germany in World War II. Everyone's favorite time travel event. Take a chisel to the fontanelles on the soft skull of baby Hitler. Boy, that'd be one. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to click on it and do it. But without the supporting agents and without an arsenal of relics, which you probably should build in the ancient world before you get into time travel and changes in the modern world, uh, you notice the steps here have gone to six, where at one time in ancient history, there were only three steps, three actions, three completed good dice rolls in order to get past it. A NATO and um, John Kennedy's assassination. I'm getting close. Uh, we're at uh, period 88, which is a total assumption on my part. There are many predictive periods of the timeline that I've created to flesh this out all the way to you get to probably what would be called classically the end of time, where you find the time traveling anomaly. It's the cryonauts versus the seventh day faction. You can still perform John Bar actions, but by doing them in the 100th period, Time Guardians, you need to collect at least three of them and then take one in order to restore the time to a normality. By changing time in an earlier era, you are changing the periods that come after it. Let me uh, demonstrate that. If I go to, um, I'm restoring the timeline. Again, I'm back in ancient Egypt here. Ancient Egypt, you know, it's one of the easiest things to manipulate because it has so many uh, thousands of years of history, amazing culture. But for thousands of years, the the historic record is very, very fluid. And so here, if I step in, and let's see if I can tinker a little bit first. Oh, it's going to tell me I'm probably rolled a four here again. No, I rolled something. I rolled a disastrous three on the dice. So my tinkering is resulting in me shattering the timeline. I'm facing uh, Goebbels again, who's trying to destroy the Neanderthals and wipe out mankind. I need to stop that. Let's see if I can find the one and only relic in this era to help me. A five? A five is going to get me closer, but uh, relic action is seven steps. No, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, to whack down these John Bar hinges. A tick at a time. A one is certainly not going to do it. In fact, it's going to tell me, and this is a great place to stop the video, game over. The last quivering lips of your own. When you're ready, click restore timeline and let's start playing again.
it's been an obsession of mine to create a time travel program. Why it ended up in Excel is just the, who knows. And, uh, more later.